now it's recording. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Hodson, the director of the library, and I'm sitting here with my dog, Twister, at home, like you guys are, and I thought I would read you a story today, and I picked this one because the, the animal on the cover reminds me of my dog, Twister, but this animal is a coyote. And the story is called Coyote and the Laughing Butterflies. And this is by Harriet Pet Taylor. Coyote and the Laughing Butterflies. Written and illustrated by Harriet Peck Taylor. In ancient times, when all the animals could talk, there lived a coyote. Coyote and his wife made their home on top of a grassy mesa, surrounded by little hills. A day's journey from their home was a big lake. The water in the lake was so salty that salt crystals collected on the shoreline, and animals came from all around to dig up the salt to use for their cooking. One morning, Coyote was, as usual, napping in the sun when his wife came to him and said, Coyote, please go to the lake today to get salt for me. I need it for cooking. Coyote lazily arose and took a sack and headed for the big salty lake through the sagebrush and down to the valley of the big salty lake. There he goes. Uh -oh. Coyote said to himself, what a good coyote I am. I've come all the way in this hot sun. I deserve a short rest. He yawned and settled in the shade of a large cactus, and soon he was fast asleep. Now, in this flower-filled meadow, there lived many beautiful butterflies. One of them flew over Coyote's head and exclaimed, Look at lazy Coyote, sleeping when he should be gathering salt. Let's play a trick on him. The butterflies flew down and each took hold of a hair in Coyote's fur, and this way, they were able to lift him off the ground. What do you think about that? A flying coyote. Coyote snored loudly. <laughs> the butterflies heard as they flew over the mountains and the meadows. Finally, they dropped him still asleep back at his home. The butterflies flew in crazy patterns in the sky, laughing all the way back to the meadow. When Coyote woke up, he was very puzzled to find himself back home. He wrinkled his furry forehead and he wondered how had he gotten there. When his wife saw him yawning beside his empty sack, she scolded, you lazy coyote, why didn't you get my salt? And Coyote promised the very next morning he would go and get the salt. There he goes. The next day, Coyote, awoke bright and early while the sun was still a big orange ball at the edge of the earth. This time he ran faster than tumbleweed as it rolls across the desert. At a bend in the canyon, he saw a lizard lounging lazily on a rock. Coyote, my friend, what's your rush? Sit and rest a while with me on my rock, lizard said. Not today, lizard. I need to go straight to the big salty lake to get salt, Coyote shouted as he hurried past. By the time he got to the lake, he was tired like you. He was so tired, he could barely lift his empty sack. He told himself, I've got plenty of time. I'll just take a short nap. He was soon sound asleep. When the butterflies heard Coyote snoring, they decided to play their trick again. One by one, they landed on Coyote and they lifted him up towards the white puffy clouds. Whoosh, went the wind as it whistled through Coyote's fur. He never woke up, not even when he was dropped at home. The butterflies were laughing hard as they flew away, zigzagging across the sunset sky. There they go. Oh, when Coyote's wife came home, she again found him asleep next to his empty sack. Now she was really mad. She sat down next to him with her empty wooden bowl and she sighed very loudly. <sighs> Coyote woke up and jumped up all at once, rubbing his eyes with his big paws. My wife, I am sure that I went to the lake. My legs are stiff and sore from all this running, he told her. She just shook her head 
and said, Coyote, I'll give you one more chance. I need the salt by tomorrow. Tomorrow you will have the salt, Coyote promised. There he is. He's going like this. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> The next day, he woke up and stretched his sore muscles. This time, he decided not to follow, to even follow the trail, but to take a shortcut to the lake. He climbed hills and ran across to the little streams, through the sagebrush and willows. And when he came to the bank of a wide river, his friend Beaver helped him get across. Here's the beaver. Coyote arrived at the big salty lake more tired than ever. Still determined, he filled his whole sack with salt. My, what a thoughtful coyote I am. My wife will be so proud of me, he thought. He decided he had time for just a short nap. His sack made a wonderful pillow, and soon he was fast asleep. At last, the butterflies felt sorry for coyote. They each grabbed a hair and lifted him up once more, but this time some of them also took hold of threads from his heavy salt sack and lifted that too. Once again, they flew over winding canyons and rocky mesas, golden in the evening light. There he goes, flying coyote. They dropped him and his sack at home, just as the sun was setting. As soon as he was awake, coyote saw that he was home again and he yipped in frustration. Then he noticed his sack filled with salt. Now he was really puzzled. Nevertheless, he took the salt to his wife and said proudly, I brought you the biggest sack of salt you ever saw. She smiled at him and said, thank you, coyote, my husband. I'll start cooking this minute. Coyote's wife cooked until she had made enough food to feed herself and coyote and all their friends. Badger, Let's see, where's Badger? Badger and Bobcat, they came. Let's see, who else? Roadrunner and Rabbit, there's Rabbit. And of course, Lizard and Beaver and all the beautiful butterflies. Coyote and his wife shared their food, giving thanks for the harvest. They danced together nose to nose, coyote style, as the harvest moon was rising big and orange in the twilight sky. Even today, butterflies remember the trick that they played on coyote. They flutter high and low, to and fro, laughing too hard to fly straight all day long in the yellow sunshine. The end. <laughs> okay.